Now, this one right here, like, whoa, I, I, I would not invest in this one, you guys. I think this one, this one's gone south on people. This is kind of an example of what not to do in real estate. I hate to always, I don't want to be negative and show you guys something horrible. Lofty is basically a marketplace that lets you invest in U.S. rental properties. They are not a fund. They're not a REIT. They're a marketplace. They don't own the properties. They just provide a place for buyers and sellers to come together. The sellers tokenize their property. It's put on the blockchain. So yes, this is a blockchain real estate you know, investment opportunity. They use the Algorand blockchain. I think they're also opening it up to other blockchains in the future, but right now they're using the Algorand blockchain. I like that. Now, what they do is they take each property when they have a final value, which is the purchase price plus the after purchase repair costs, closing costs, all the fees. So you'll have that total value of all those numbers added up and they divide that by $50 because it's $50 per token. And that tells them how many tokens will be for sale. Like could be 10,000 tokens for sale, for example. Now, when you buy these, you have to connect a wallet to your dashboard when you log into Lofty. But um, they also provide an internal wallet in the marketplace or in the, in the app itself. So you don't necessarily need an external crypto wallet like MyAlgo or anything like that. You buy the tokens using either credit card, debit card. You can use wire transfer, bank transfer, or you can buy with crypto. Like you can buy with Algorand, you can buy with USDC and USD. So you have a lot of ways to get into these properties. It's not You can do the whole thing without actually using any crypto you can connect your your debit card and just use the lofty wallet and and do everything right in that space without having to do anything in the crypto world if that makes you nervous now lofty is not mobile they don't have a mobile app right now so you're going to be accessing it on a desktop personally as a broker i'm a real estate broker been a real estate broker since 1991 one of the things i like about having it on the desktop is basically on the desktop you can do, i think you can do better due diligence you can see the pictures better you can read all of the documents more clearly. It's harder to read them on a phone. And you know, when you're investing in real estate, you want to be able to do good due diligence. So this right here is the Lofty Marketplace on desktop. I like it. It's clean. It has all the information you need. All the documents are here. All of your due diligence is done from here. You can look at it on other properties, other properties. If you're thinking about buying other properties, people have bought, you just want to do your research. They have a nice filter here. You can filter by markets. You can filter by types of properties. And then when you drop into a property, the details of the property, you can click into the financials of the property. You can look at the documents. We'll look at those in just a second. So, and then if you click on the buying process, it shows you where this property is on that buying process. You can see on this one right here, March 27th, the Dow, each property is its own Dow. It's put it under contract with the seller. Then they have the token offering that's going on now when people fund it fully. Then the, that will be down here. The token offering is complete. They will close on the property and then they can start moving forward with the investment as it's planned, which is as a rental property. Now, how does Lofty make money? On their documentation, in one place, they say they make a 6 to 10% 6 to listing fee. But I've also seen further in their documentation that they charge a 5% listing fee. They don't charge a fee when the token offering is put up for sale and you want to buy into a property. They don't charge any fee there. But once a property has been fully funded and then you can sell and buy additional tokens in their marketplace, then they charge a 2.5% fee for buyers and sellers of those tokens. Now, these are long-term rentals. These aren't short-term rentals. I know taxing is the taxes are different with short-term rentals than long-term rentals. So Lofty has all long-term rentals right now. And I see a mix of single-family homes, some multifamily properties, and I do see a handful of mixed-use properties or commercial properties that also have other tenants in there i'll show you one up here in a minute now they do have a marketplace for liquidity and that's very nice but it's limited right now it's sort of hotel california meaning once you get in it's kind of hard to get out this is a long-term play you guys this isn't a short-term investment this isn't crypto returns you're not going to be thousand xing your money or 10 xing your money this is real estate investing now one of the numbers i'm seeing very common here is a 10 percent return on your investment that is in real estate fantastic if you came to me in my market and I sold you a rental house on the MLS and within one year in our normal market, I could not sell you that property for you and get you out of that sale and have a 10% return on your money. That is very difficult in the first year on the rental property. But within the first year to get that sort of a return is very, very difficult. I'm seeing that return here on Lofty. They're paying rents out daily to the token holders proportionally. However much you own, you get that proportion of the rent. They divvy it up and they pay it out daily. 
So that's nice for, you know, sort of cash flow. But if you're buying one token or two tokens here and there, you're not really going to be adding that much value to your, your monthly world. Now, I'm not seeing any debt financing on these properties. So these properties, when you buy into them, they're on free and clear. So there's no debt financing. That means there's more income available paid back to the token holders. But that also means there's no leverage and leverage is powerful in real estate. Leverage is important for growing your bank, for example. If you want to make a lot of money in real estate, leverage is a concept that you really want to know about because it's very important. Now, unfortunately, Lofty is not using any leveraged properties. Actually, if you would like to know about a platform that is doing leveraging and leveraged properties in this exact same way, wait till the end of this video and I'm going to show you a, pro a platform that is doing this and it is providing leverage. Right now, the markets they're in, I'll show you, it says right here, they're in Akron, Birmingham, Alabama, Charlotte, Chicago, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Detroit, Dallas, Fort Worth, Huntsville, Alabama, Kansas City, Louisville, Memphis, Miami, Pittsburgh, Quad Cities, and St. Louis. So they're not everywhere, but these are a decent number of cities. You can see they're all sort of located in, the mid in sort of that Midwest or Mid-South areas. Now I can say when you're investing in real estate and you're looking nationwide, if you look out at the coasts, you're going to have properties that get a lot more appreciation that's how you make your money, so to speak, more in the appreciation and the value of the property is going up. But when you bring that into the center of the country in the Midwest and maybe even the Mid-South, you get more money on cash flow, for example, on your rents, and you don't get as much in appreciation. It's just the way it goes in real estate. It's very common. Um, it's not a good or bad. It's just the technique that you need to know about when you're investing in real estate. Are you going for an appreciation gain or are you going for more of a cash flow gain? These properties seem to me to be more on the cash flow side, not on the appreciation side. That's just my opinion as a real estate broker, but it's kind of what I'm seeing here on some of these properties. Now, taxes, taxes are filed through a K-1. They will fill out a K-1 for you for each property that you are have a token in. Um, and then they will send that to the IRS for you. And then they will send you a copy of that for yourself also. For yourself also. Now, they do it as a K-1 because these aren't REITs. These are basically taxed as a partnership as part of a DAO. And these are DAOs. What, what a DAO is, is a decentralized autonomous organization. And what that means is basically your membership in a group, in a voting group. And you own it together as a voting group, but you're taxed as a partnership using the K-1. And you do get depreciation on these properties, of course, because it's not a REIT. You do get it. That, that's going to be shown. I think what they do is they show that on the K-1. You get it with depreciation built in and then any in income you know, past that depreciation is what you're going to be taxed on on for your filing with the IRS. Now, let's look back at the marketplace because I want to show you guys how the due diligence works and what the documents actually look like if you're looking at investing in the property. Now, this one right here, like, whoa, I, I, I would not invest in this one, you guys. I think this one, this one's gone south on people. This is kind of an example of what not to do in real estate. I hate to always, I don't want to be negative and show you guys something horrible, but I wanted to show you guys something because it's not always going to be great in real estate. This is why you want to diversify. But let's take a look at this one here. It's a mixed use property. Now, this one's gone south. They, they have tenant vacancies. They owe money. Um, the property doesn't look that fantastic. Let's look at the pictures, and I'll tell you whether or not I would have invested in this property. Now, looking at the front, I can tell you I would not have invested in this property. And the reason being is because there's pro because of these things on the wall. So you have these, these, you know, these grates on the windows. That tells me about its location. That tells me about the tenant mix. That tells me about what some of the hassles. For example, um, huge tenant repair bills evicting tenants is going to happen more often maybe this was sold with the higher cash on cash return so it looked really solid but the bars on the windows tells me a lot also now it's got a church in here it has a empty space with a mat so this is obviously a fitness or a yoga studio and actually these rental units on these pictures don't look that bad these look pretty decent so their investment value is four hundred and forty six thousand dollars the underlying asset price is four hundred thirty eight thousand dollars when they bought it, they had closing costs of $4,300, city transfer tax of $3,200. Now, the upfront Dow fees, that's going to be just probably um, the fees for incorporating the Dow. They do it in Wyoming. They didn't. They have zero in operating reserves, low cash on cash or in investment rate of return right now. And that's because the property, I think, fully vacant. Now, when you go to buy into a property, you want to look at the documents. This is what's showing on this property. You can see right here, this property has already been closed. They have the closing document. They have the closing, the wire confirmation. House Canary is who they use for property valuations. And that information is all here, for example. But all the due diligence is here. Here's the inspection report. Here's the insurance policy. Invoices, lease agreements. They've shown you all the lease agreements. 
um, pictures of roof, the purchase contract, so the purchase sale agreement, invoices for repairs, the repairs done, sell the attor seller's attorney modifications, and the utility summary. I love that these documents are available. They're on-chain. They're searchable. Some of the other platforms I'll be talking about don't have this amount of due diligence available to investors to look at all the documents. So I think Lofty is being very transparent on what you're getting into when you invest. So when I'm doing the math, let me just show you right here. This is what's called the order book. So on each property, you can look this, the last trade. So this is the marketplace. The last trade was at $32. In four weeks, they've only had $2,800 in trading volume. This is what I mean by Hotel California. If you were into this property for $10,000 and you wanted out, they've only had $2,800 in exiting people buying that um, over the last four weeks. The market cap right now is $468,000, which is basically 10,207 tokens multiplied by this $45 token price. Now, I'm only showing you this negative scenario right here just to highlight that it's not all fun and games with tokenized property. You aren't there to see it yourself. You're not there to look at the neighborhoods. You're not actually there to walk into the property and smell it and to really understand the property. So that's the risks. So let's pick a new listing. If I was to invest in the property today in Lofty, this is the way I would do it. I would pick this. I like this property right here. So why do I like this property? Because it's nice from the outside. I have no idea about this neighborhood in North Carolina. Salisbury, North Carolina. Token price, $50. There's 5,192 tokens left to purchase. So this townhome was built in 2018. Seller recently spent $6,000 on new paint, new flooring. So there's a that's nice. Okay, I can just say right here, these are this is decent. This kitchen looks pretty decent. So they say right here, the occupancy status right here, that they will be renting this for $1,600 a month. $1,600 a month for a $272,000 purchase price on a nicer looking rental. I think that's a pretty good analysis right up front. It's built in 2018, so you're not going to have massive repair problems going into it, hopefully. Seeing the $1,600 month rent with a $272,000 purchase price, I like that range for an investment. So if I was to invest in the property right now, this is the way I would do it by using the marketplace. The first thing I would consider is am I going to buy into a property that's just in the process of being purchased or would I buy a property that already has some history? I would probably pick a property that already has some history on the platform. Let's pick one right here. So I'm just picking this just randomly right here. 126th Street. Um, it's in Cleveland, Ohio. They're giving it a 13.7% IRR and a 12% cash on cash return. That's really huge. I would go and look at the order book. Here's the order book. I can see right now they have an open buy order at $31 a token. Someone's offering to buy one token. You have a bunch of people selling at $40. The estimated value is 46. Since people are offering to sell at 40, something's wrong with this property. I can tell you it's going to be that they're probably filling up their reserves. But if I was to be buying into this property and people are selling at $40, I would drop a buy order right above this $31 here. This guy at 31 for one token. Let's say I wanted to buy in at 10 tokens. I would drop a 10 token buy order at $32 and see if any of these $42 people just want to drop off and just sell it one day for that price. I think you would eventually, I think you'd get picked up on that. I think there's people that always want to liquidate and sell out and people are willing to take a pretty big loss the smaller the dollar amount is. If you have a $50,000 investment and you go to someone and, and they say, hey, I'll give you $20,000 for your $50,000 investment, people are going to tell you that's not going to happen. But if you were to say to someone, hey, you've got this $50 token, you're getting out of the lofty because you're kind of burnt out and you want to go try something new, I'll give you $30 for it. Someone taking the $20 loss, they'll do that pretty swiftly just to get out of something they didn't like. So I would drop, I would do that as if I was to buy in here instead of buying into a brand new property at the ask price, I would drop in a bunch of buy orders on a bunch of properties that are performing pretty well. So when I look at the pros and cons of lofty, let's talk about some of the pros. Number one, daily income. From the rent, I like that. You get appreciation from the properties. I like that. They have great due diligence on the documents. I like that. There's no lockup period. So when you buy in, you can start selling out your tokens if you want. But like I said, it's a little Hotel California there. So you might not be selling out very quickly. But there is a way to start at least liquidating your tokens if you want to. And there are rumors that they are going to be opening this up to a bigger marketplace. And I will say in general, you guys, when it comes to blockchain, look in the future for property tokens like this someday to be able to be sold in other marketplaces out there. When that happens, that will provide a massive bump in liquidity to all these properties. You have a, When you have a secondary market, you can get a 20 to 30% liquidity bump. So if they open this up to a bigger liquid market, you're going to see a bump in all these prices. That's just my prediction as a broker, but I think that would happen. 
Now, the risk I see is, number one, you don't know the locations. You haven't seen the property, so there's a little bit of risk there. These don't seem like A-plus locations necessarily. Another risk is you're trusting the documents. You're trusting the due diligence that has been done completely. Now, by looking at these documents, they look real, and I would move forward for a $50 or $100 investment myself on these. But that's just sort of what you have to understand is that you're trying to buy a property on paper. And the last risk, this is a risk that I see more for the platform than the investors, and that's an SEC risk. Is this a security? Are they going to get slammed by the SEC? Because there's issues here um, about whether or not passes the, it goes through the Howey test. There, when you look at that, the Howey test, the four prongs, the, the hard one for Lofty is to be a secure, if it's, it passes the first three to be a security. It, you look it up if you want to know what those are. But the fourth one, the problem one is, is that you're profiting off efforts of others. That makes it a security. In this case, I think what Lofty's arguing is, is that we're a marketplace like Airbnb, so we don't own the properties. We have nothing to do with ownership. Each individual token holder is, is owning the property. The token holders are voting on the governance of the property, the tenants, the repairs. Everyone votes on that. They're just So I understand that. But does the SEC and does the SEC agree with that? We don't know yet. There's Time will tell. But the risk to the platform, I think, is what the risk is, to, is S, with the SEC hitting them and shutting them down. Worst case scenario. If that happens, what happens to your property? Well, it's kind of unknown. But a couple of things I see when I look at their documents. Number one, the property holders, the token holders, they're part of a DAO and they decide what to do with the property. A token holder can issue a vote and all the token holders can have a governance vote to decide if they want to do something different with the property. So if the SEC was coming down hard on Lofty, the token holders, which are separate, they're a Wyoming registered DAO, those token holders could elect just to sell the property. All that stuff is on chain, but, you know, there's titles, there's deeds, all that stuff has been done. So the SEC can't like take those properties back. There's a huge process and they have hundreds of properties up here. I think worst case scenario is that Lofty could, if they were to get shut down by the SEC, each property being its own DAO could decide what to do, liquidate the property, it could be off platform. There's already a process that there's a, there's a law firm that's associated with each DAO in case Lofty goes bankrupt or goes out of the, out of the way that they would help, help handle the governance and the management of the DAO. I like the way that that's set up in case of any sort of risk of the SEC. But I just wanted to be honest with you guys that I think that's the risk here. Now, I said at the beginning, there's another platform that you can look at that does have leverage. And I love that platform. And that's going to be right here. If you click on this link right here, you're going to see my review of a platform that offers fantastic opportunities with leverage. And I really recommend you check that out.